Double XL's the break is for all you aspiring rappers who need a little help getting on. This is the place to get all the info on how to make it in hip hop from some of the biggest and most experienced names in the game, like me, your dope boy Troy Av. Pay attention, and special guests drop knowledge to help you become a star. This is Double XL's The Break Podcast. What's up? This is Vanessa Satin and Miranda Johnson from Double XL, working on the XXL podcast, The Break. This is the first official episode, and this was important for us. Why, Miranda? Why do you think? Why do you think we wanted to do this podcast for new artists? Um, I think the primary reason we wanted to do this is because um, constantly, especially. <clears throat> Being that we are the curators of freshmen, right. a lot of new artists are constantly pitching us, you know, their video or their song. And we kind of just wanted to give them, like, you know, the accurate tools to kind of get on that road to freshmen. I think it's that plus um, we see a lot of these music panels. We mm-hmm. see a lot of the artists have a lot of the same questions or the new artists have a lot of the same questions. So we felt like if we cover those questions... And, and interview some of the industry heavyweights and rappers and tastemakers who make this kind of industry turn that they could kind of offer some free advice to all the aspiring artists to trying to be the next big star. Right. So um, so we broke this podcast down. It's, uh, I think it's 12 plus episodes yeah. where we have different topics for every artist. There's uh, different topics for everybody to talk about um, from your identity, management, indie, major, marketing, social networking. And we spoke to a bunch of industry heavyweights from uh, Kevin Lyles to Joey Badass to Fetty Wap to Cortez Bryant Mm -hmm. to um, representatives from Atlantic and Epic and Def Jam and and really got their two cents about advice for you guys, the new artists who are, are trying to get on. Um, you don't have to pay for this. You don't have to, you know, make best friends with somebody in the industry and hopefully they'll give you this information. This is purely from XXL providing you, you know, the most up to date current information from the people who make hip hop happen um, about how maybe you could become part of the whole world in it. And so I think for the very first episode, we're doing building your identity. Um, building your identity, I think that's one of the most essential things of when you first start as an artist so people kind of know who you are. And I think that, you know, from the research we've done, we saw that that was kind of probably the biggest focus. So yes. for there, we spoke to um, Wale, who always is very opinionated and, and has <laughs> stuff to say, but has definitely cultivated himself into a, a number one selling artist. Absolutely. Um, we also speak to one of XXL's very favorite, Joey Badass, who um, one of our XXL freshmen that we're very proud of and has been building his career more and more and more. And then we spoke to the president of Global A&R for Warner Music Group, which is Atlantic Records and Warner Brothers, and that's Mike Karen, who gave an absolutely great interview mm-hmm. um, of advice for new artists. So let's hear what Joey has to say first. We'll, we'll check in with him first. Cool? Let's do it. Um, well, my name is Joey Badass. You know, that was the name that... That's my stage name. But, um, you know, who I am is... I guess you could just say I'm a kid from Brooklyn, you know, it's just trying to spread a positive message like you know my main purpose that I feel on this earth is just to inspire you know uh, people across the world just to follow their dreams follow their hearts so that ties really into the building your identity um, topic which is something that you know uh, for new artists it's kind of deciding who you are as a person um, to the public who are you presenting and I think that you just brought that up by saying I'm a kid from Brooklyn but also this is my stage name so how would you say those two are different from each other and how would you say your artist persona and who you really are are similar or different um it's definitely similar you know Uh, I like to think as you know my whole the whole concept of me being like you know a walking contradiction ever since like you know I came out that's like what my thing was I wanted I I, I always liked the idea of having people view me one way but it's really like another thing once they really dissect it you know because in this world it's like you know people just make a judgment and they just take it for what it is so they're like Joey Bass like what the fuck can this music be about right like you know what I'm saying can't be anything about like the shit that it actually is about all the things that I actually do represent. So, you know, that's why I always look at it. And that's kind of how I pretty much bypass uh, the whole, you know, finding your identity to the to the world. Those Because, you know, I came on the scene when I was 17 years old, so it was hard for me to just have an identity ready. I was still growing, you know what I'm saying? So You're trying to figure out your identity as a person yourself. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 
So how important do you think it is to go in to this career, to um, to rapping, to hip-hop, with an idea of who that person is versus how much is it stumbling and finding it along the way? Come in, Sam. How, how, how much is it about coming into this game and knowing the persona you want to give people already versus discovering it along the way as you're actually in it? Well, um, and you have, I mean, is it about public image? Is it about this is who I want the well, character you know, of Jody ba- Joey Badass to represent? Yeah. The, I, well, you know, one aspect of the game is definitely public image. You know, it is that whole image. Who are you? Uh, you know, what? how do people feel when they see you, when they hear you, and things like that. So I think it's definitely important to have uh, a solid understanding of that before, you know, you hit the scene. Is is that like, you know, even... It's interesting now because, you know, we're getting ready to drop Kirk's project. And it's like, you know, Kirk, he's in a, he has an advantage because, you know, he got to sit somewhere where he could see, like, you know, for example, me. He could see me go through all my trials and errors. You know, I could make this mistake. And now I could transfer it into wisdom. Like, yo, bro, look, there's a fire here. You know what I'm saying? Don't go in that room right there. And now he has more of an understanding of how to move. Like, he has more things, you know, clutched to... To him, he has an understanding of, you know, who he is right out the gate. Right. Yeah, so it's definitely important. Do you think it's important? It it seems like, you know, people like to box everybody up into a certain type of artist. Do you think that you fall into those boxes? What do you think of something like that? Oh, he's an hipster artist. Oh, he's a this. Oh, he's a that. Oh, you know, he's real street or whatever. Did you ever feel like you were boxed into anything like that? Or was that a good thing or a bad thing, even that kind of thing existing? Um, I definitely say that, you know, people definitely try to put me in a box, but um, just the way I am, the type of person I am, there was never a box to begin with, you know, so I don't I don't like to live in myself whatsoever, like, I like to do everything or nothing, that's just my mentality, but yeah, in this game, you know, people would definitely try to box you in because it's all about... It's all about classification or... Not, not even classification, but it's all about, uh, like, you know... How how can they describe you? How can they like you know explain what it is? Like oh, he's he sounds like that blah blah blah. Or he sounds like or he reminds me of you know. So that's a given. That's what people are gonna do. But um, you represent New York. You're from New York. You're New York. You were, when you were a new artist coming from there. How much did that play a role that you were this New York artist versus you were just a new rapper and had your city kind of identify what you were supposed to sound like or be like? I mean, I, it definitely played a a huge role because, you know, in my mentality, one, just being from New York, having a New York hustle embedded inside of me, just knowing that anything I got to do, got to get it now, do it yourself mentality, that attitude. And also to the outside world, when they see this artist coming from New York, it's like, you know, New York is like the Mecca. Just to bear New York is an honor just to have that attached to your name. So when people see that from other places, like across the pond, it's like, oh, shit, like, you know, who is this cat? He's from New York, you know? So it definitely helped out a lot. So for 20-something-year-old kid, I think he's like 20. I, I, I love Joey. I think he really gets the industry. I think he really knows what's going on. And I think from that interview, that offers a, a lot of key information, just, you know, the first one of of aspiring new artists, you know? Um, what I took away most is I thought that he said, you know, coming out of 17, at 17 years old, coming out so young, he's trying to figure out his own identity of who he is at the same time of trying to figure out his identity as an artist. And I think that's an interesting thing is that you're juggling, you know, depending on your age, but kind of all going through changes at the time is you're trying to identify yourself as the star and as the person at home. And that's sometimes something we might not think about and something they might not even think about going in. But uh, what'd you like from what Joey said? Did you did you relate to that part, or what yeah. do you think stood out? I totally related to that part. That has to be extremely tough trying to figure out who you are. Um, you know, when the world is kind of like you know being so judgmental of you know your work and you know who you are as a character. Um, but yeah, Joey is one of the my favorite personalities in hip hop. Just like you know, not that he's so you know outspoken and outrageous, but that he's just so. Um, down to earth and he's one of like you know he's someone that you could tell is going to last in the business just because well, he pays of... attention to his business right he goes to a photo shoot he's asking questions mm-hmm. he goes and he's working on a project he's asking he wants to know what's going on it's not just there to make him a star he wants to be involved in everything and not all artists are like that but i think he benefits from that because he looks genuinely interested for sure in 
finding stuff out so that he can use those tools later. Mm -hmm. Like when you're that young and you're getting these opportunities, it, you're that young getting this knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this and these and these bits of information of how to move forward. And I think Johnny, uh, sorry, I think it's Joey, Johnny Shipe shout out is his uh, label head. But I think that Joey has done a good job along the way of um, of really learning the tools that it takes and not just having the moments happen and, and go by ignored. You know, another thing he said that was interesting is not limiting yourself for being boxed in, that people always want to box you in. Mm -hmm. They want to box him in as a New York artist. Right. They want to box him in as a teen artist maybe, or they want to box him in as, you know, a backpack or whatever it is. And he's saying that don't box yourself in because everyone's going to box you in in the description. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting because we do tend to say you're a th Southern artist, you're a... a hipster rapper you are this you are that and he's saying you look beyond that because everyone else won't right it, it makes it like boxing them in kind of makes it easier for us to describe them or, or like you know just to kind of place them sell them describe yeah, sell them, them label yeah. them yeah and it's kind of not fair since the art is changing more than ever mm -hmm. and you can have more involvement than ever in your career right for sure well that takes us over to our next interview um for this building your identity um topic which is wale the outspoken wale yes. <laughs> maybach music group wale um definitely is known for some stuff he has to say mm -hmm. so let's have him talk a little bit about building your identity and see what he advises let's get into wale so off the top, as I say, you know, building your identity, you know, what comes to mind for you of, of, a, of a key component to doing that for a new artist? Well, for, for me personally, like I had to, like, you got to actually know what, to, what, the, what you're trying to do, like who you want to be for the for the world, like how much you want to show, how much you want to reveal. Mine has been, like, I built my identity slowly. Like every album, I just gave a little bit more and a little bit more, a little bit more, and it was like a slow reveal. You know, that's that's on from the art from the art and the brands the branding side of it. Uh, but from the jump beginning beginning, I think <clears throat> financially you gotta you know establish. Are you gonna do, are you gonna be one of the people that makes it on the internet? Are you gonna be one of the people that makes it in the streets? As far as like, are you gonna have that record that's playing locally? Everybody knows. I know I know kids with record deals with five thousand followers. You know what I'm saying? Because the label believes in that person and they found a way for people to that and to find out. There are no people with. 200,000 followers and they can't get a deal. You know what I'm saying? And they popping in their city. You know what I'm saying? And they popping in the streets. So it's just a matter of establishing what kind of artist you want to be, who your demographic is, and what, you know, how you want to present yourself. And how do you establish what kind of artist you want to be? Is that the music that you want to make, the music that you're making already, the music that you can make? I mean, what if you want to be something but you really don't have that sound? How, you know, how do you line what, up that? Well, it depends on what you, like, like what's true to you. Some people like the money. Some people like the money and like the money, you know, runs their whole philosophy on how, how they present themselves and all that other stuff. So some people are obsessed with money. Some people like the art form, you know what I'm saying? Like me, I came in, I wasn't really pressed for the money like that. I was just really into rapping and being the best lyricist that I could be. And the money eventually came. But, you know, some people were like, man, I'm going to do this record. I'm going you know, to do, I'm going to burn it up while I can, you know. You like the dudes who might have a catchy song in the summer with a dance and you don't hear from them no more. You know what I'm saying? That was important to them is milking that joint and not really, like, you know what I'm saying? That was a lick to them. So, you know, for me, I was always into poetry words and, and stuff like that and, and just dope rapping, and I just wanted to do that. Do you think if you look back at who you came out as an artist when you first came out, that that's still who you are? Do you think that identity still sits with you today, even though it's oh, broken? Oh, it's more now. It's more it's, now. V. But same track, same person, same track. Yeah, same per. I mean, it's more. I'm just more. I'm just more like confident. Like, like you know, when I signed, I, I was very like raw as a writer. Like, I just knew how to say tight stuff. I didn't really know like how to like construct a song or like I didn't even know how to be risky when I made a song. I didn't know like the, the, the norm. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know nothing. I wasn't comfortable like harmonizing. I wasn't comfortable like I couldn't write hooks as far as like for other people. You know, now I write songs, whole songs front to back for other people. You know what I'm saying? I've learned a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? And I just think now I'm just that person, but I'm just way more confident. Like, you know, if you take me 10 years ago or, or, or six years ago when I came in, six years ago, uh, I was way, I was thinking different. I was talking different. I was dressing different, but I, I still had this confidence that I knew when I got to where I'm at now, it was going to be over. So how do you learn branding early on? If you're new or you're a new artist, you're not signed, but you want to brand yourself, what do you think are the are the 
are the most important things to do to make your brand? Oh, man, I think, I think you just, for real, for real, and I always say this to everybody, like, I, I told this to Meek, I told this to uh, uh, Sean, we always talk about this brand, and it's like, when you, <clears throat> when you, everything, when you blow up, when you blow up, when you have this moment, when you blow up, you know, I think around the time for me was like, maybe, mm, well, it might have kind of different because it was like an underground thing, and it wasn't really like a, it was like a different wave that I was starting around, but like, most of the time when you blow up, and you get to that level, all the things that interest you, all the things that you love, they blow up as well. So if I'm into tattoos and ink and all this stuff, when I blow up, you're going to see a, a, a spike in that interest in, in the general urban world. Like, Meek is in the bikes and shit like that. All the bike people started coming out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, and bike, and bike riders started being a hobby. You know, I was in the OG sneakers and shit like that, right, when I came out. Not the tip hop always had an affinity for sneakers, but, at the same time, it was like a different wave. Like, niggas was trying to get the most, lim- most, most limited joints they could find. Not just the J's, not just the, you know what I'm saying, niggas was. So when you blow up, everything that you love blows up with you. And, and you have to establish that when you're creating this brand. Like, you close your eyes and be like, am I going to be this dude that's like, you know, what do I like? What do I like? And I'm a, because you can't rap about the same goddamn thing all the time. So you're going to have to talk about your lifestyle and all that other stuff. And people got to buy into that. So you're going to be like, all right, I like fucking ballet, nigga, I like, I like fucking cars, I like comic books, whatever, you're going to put that in your shit, and the people that are, are with that, or people that understand that lifestyle and that brand, they're going to, you're going to be the, uh, an apostle of that shit, you know what I'm saying? How much is taking advantage of different outlets, you know, uh, social, YouTube, all those things to brand yourself a certain way early on? Um, and make your identity so people can find you easier. Was that something that you did? Is that something that's more about the now? But how important is is that in order your identity online? You know. Well, I mean, like I was like I, I, we was ushering in that that era. You know what I'm saying? Like, like making it on the internet. But like, luckily I had the streets as well, just because like it was time for DC to have someone, and I had that as well. But you know, the internet played a big part. Like MySpace was big. Like off the break, like that was what. One of the first, like, you know, sites we was getting our musical and trapping. Like, we was really trapping off MySpace. <clears throat> and then, you know, uh, Instagram and all Twitter, all these things come. But, like, now, it's like, like, like we talked about earlier, it's like the Wild Wild West because there's, like, so much shit going on. There's so much shit. There's so many sites, so many vines. And I would really, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't panic if they cut off 90% of them joints and we just went back to, like, <laughs> basic internet, like, print magazines, like, slow down, America, like, just slow down. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, it doesn't stop. And, you, and that's part of it with a new artist, you know, uh, just bringing it all together, is it's literally keeping abreast on every situation that you can get yourself out there, right? So this technology, right. although tired for us a little bit, is exactly for what somebody new needs to get out there, no? Yeah, but it's just, like, at some point, like, you don't, you don't want to make it too all over the place as to where you know, people are like, all right, man, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's good if you just pick, like, two or three socials. Like, you don't need a – and my – this is my opinion, though. You know, but, like, at the same time, look, Vine is a lot more popular than I give it credit for. You know what I'm saying? Like, Vine is the fucking, oh, my God, why you lying, dude? Like, he's getting money to go to clubs now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Vine and shit like that. So, like, some people are into Vine, some people are into uh, Twitter. But my opinion, I feel like you just got to narrow it down so it's not all over the place. And you focus on one demographic, but other people might tell you different. Other people might say, "You go, you have everything. You try to get as many fans as you can on everything." Not- How important is it to have a vision of who you are, um, knowing that you could change and everything? But how sh- how much of a vision should you have for yourself as an artist early on? And you know, I mean, that could always change. You really don't know too much. But how conscious should you be of what you're presenting and who you are as a character versus growing into it? Like I'm a guy at rap. Yeah or I'm a guy that raps and has this, and this is my image, and this is what I wear, and this is all that. How much is that kind of stuff and that identity is, is important early on? Well, I mean, I don't know. Because like, so, sometimes you don't want to be so contrived as to where you're like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, I'm going to make sure I wear my hat this way. And like, sometimes you don't want to be that OD contrived. You know what I'm saying? Like, you kind of yeah. have to have like an effortless vibe with you, like a, a relatable vibe with you. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 <laughs> Ironically, that's kind of that's kind of contrived a little bit to say I'm not gonna try. Like you know what I'm saying? So 
I mean, a, 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 any way you look, I mean, you can look at it both kind of ways. But I know in this era, like a lot of people like when they don't, when your brand looks like it's you, like it looks, feels like you, it doesn't feel like some label. That's why now a lot of times labels are signing kids and they're not even announcing that they're signed, but they're just funding them. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Because it, 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 it's, it, it's good for people's brand. Like, so, you know, the rules have kind of changed a little bit. Like if I was just coming up, maybe I would do a deal with Def Jam and be like, I'm signed there. Y'all help me get my shit out. But everybody thinks I'm like this young independent artist that, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <clears throat> And it's an image thing. Yep. All right, so that brings us to when you're signing a deal. So if you're a new artist, just to switch it up, if you're a little bit, if you're a new artist, how do you decide, do you think in this day and age, to be an indie artist or a major artist? How do you decide that a label is right for you, a record label is right for you, a major label is right for you versus going an independent route? That's easy. Well, it depends on what kind of team you have already, what kind of team you have the competence of your team. People say indie, 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 but y'all not even, some people some people not even ready to put the work in the indie. That's a lot of work, man. I mean, that's true work. That's that's some, a true next. I mean, not that many artists are true indie. It's usually there's distribution from somewhere. There's something you know not traditional indie. But the, when you do that, that's the definition of doing it all, right? Yep, yep. And it's too much, man. For me, like you know, man, like I mean, like we're starting off. I mean, I can afford it now just to have people do things that going to win, but that's too much for me. Okay. And like, like man, like I'm already bad with my phone. I'm already bad, like not mad, unorganized. Like, if you can, if you can do all that, if you're one of those genius people that can just do all of that stuff, then by God, then do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but don't be, but be, but be prepared to not hear your stuff in the club or the radio or anywhere but your shows. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You're going to indie. I don't care how good your music is. All right, so that was Wale with his two cents. You know, Wale's definitely got opinions on things, but I think that was informative. Um, what'd you take away from it? He's so passionate. He's he's such a passionate character. Anything that you that he says, you can tell it, it came straight from the heart. Um, I took away a lot from that. I, I definitely think that anything that he has to say is definitely. Um, built off of experiences it's not built off of like you know him just guessing or or you know providing information from outside sources well he's been through it a little bit he's been the solo artist he's been part of the crew you know he's had a number one album he's been frustrated he's had big songs so he's kind of been through the gamut a bit that you know it's a, a good place to speak from to be able to advise how do you even get started you know i thought what was cool that he mentioned was what are you doing it for are you doing it for the art form are you doing it for to be a lyricist are you doing it for the money like you have to to decide very early on what's the reason you're going to be a hip hop artist. Is this your career? Is this your passion? Is this just how you're getting a check? And you know, there's other things that you're really into. You know, I think that was the most important thing that I took, or one of the most important things that I took away is like you have to be very confident in who you are and knowing why are you doing this and what is your vision for yourself. Um, and he said that usually kind of, you know, what you come into the industry with and who you are kind of sticks with you. You might grow and you might change a bit, but literally what you come in with is kind of an enhanced version of yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then he acknowledged it being the Wild West, which is something we mention a lot around here is, you know, that it's kind of this crazy world where you can't do anything that we want, but you kind of can. Mm -hmm. And you can come up with ideas that have never been done and there's no right or wrong. There's no yes or no. So, you know take advantage of these kind of moments because it's kind of the Wild West, which was pretty cool. Um, what do you think Wale, you mean you think Wale cares about the new artist? Um, I do, because I, I remember... I think that was genuine. Yeah, and I remember um, when we had the two DC artists on this past freshman cover, he went extra hard, like, yeah, go DC. Go right, DC. exactly, with Shy Glizzy mm -hmm. and, and uh, Goldlink, he was really supportive, and right. he'd reached out to us and saying, you know, thanks for looking out for DC and everything, so that was cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Another thing he pointed out was that when you blow up, everything around you blows up. Right. You know, so is that um, your hobbies, if that's the girls around you, if that's um, your best friends around you, it's whatever you talk about. I mean, you literally will see all of a sudden some celebrity's best friend has more Instagram followers than you because they're the best <laughs> yeah. friend of someone, you know? So I think that was important to say is that remember what is close to you and what is important to you is going to blow up with your success. And I don't think rappers think about that so often. Um as kind of their first initial break in the game, what are you representing? You know, because that's going to blow up and be attached to you for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I love that because I feel like um, with that said, it's like 
you have to really, um, as an artist, you have to kind of really be yourself. Because it's like those things that are blowing up around you, like let's say in the beginning you're this way and let's say a, a label kind of just makes you up. Um, down the road, you're going to look like a, a flop or, or you're going to look like a phony because then the real you comes out. And then it's like, you know, all that stuff you told us in the beginning was a, was a lie. So I love how he kind of puts that out there to be like, you know. That's what the don't be with, contrived yeah. by, not, by not being contrived. You're kind of contrived, you right, know, like yeah. don't be contrived because we can read through it. Yeah. But then don't go over the top trying to overcompensate in another way because people can read through that. Mm -hmm. So it's got a real balance, right? Right, yeah. Um, well, Thanks to Wale, I think that was was great for everybody. Um, and now Mike Karen. Mike Karen, I thought that was one of the best interviews we've done. Um, Mike, again, is the president of Global a &R for Warner Music Group. That's Atlantic and Warner Brothers. But I think, you know, we've gotten a lot of interviews, but I think this was coming up as one of the best interviews we got for new artists. Yeah, by far. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's get into what some of Mr. Karen has to say. So you are the man talking to a lot of new artists on a regular basis, right? Sure, yes. Okay, so how do you go about, first off, how do you go about finding artists? For you, what's your, what's, what, what do you like to do to find a new artist? What's your, what's your system? Well, I'm a music addict. I'm online all the time. I um, go through blogs. I go through uh, blog aggregators. I follow Twitter charts and SoundCloud charts and, um, and just, you know, sometimes just surf. I'm checking out new releases on Tuesdays, Mondays and Tuesdays on Spotify, on iTunes. I go to the occasionally to the mixtape um, uh, sites. And um, and then I have a, you know, a team of young A&Rs, um, or not only young A&Rs, but A&Rs underneath me that, that bring uh, artists to my attention, as well as scouts and um, sort of quasi-intern scouts that bring um, acts to my, to my attention. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, you know, a lot of times they bring similar acts um, and, you know the same acts even, um, but sometimes it's, it's it's different music, and I hear different um, sort of visions for those artists and predictions for the future, along with the, you know the pitches of artists when they play them. Do you feel like there's more new artists than ever before for SXL? It feels like more there's more aspiring rappers than ever before. Every year there's more. Is that just a feeling that we're getting over here, or do you kind of feel the same way? Do you see a lot more than ever? I don't, I don't get the feeling that there's a lot more rappers. I get the feeling that there's a lot more music coming um, online for public consumption. I actually think, uh, you know, I don't know the facts, but it almost seems like there's less albums being released than ever, you know, even though it's, you know, it's, it's people are recording so much, they're not actually, you know, packaging them and presenting them in, in you know, a professional way. It seemed like... Yeah. Back when I used to read, you know, Murder Dog magazine, and there used to be those, um, uh, you know, Southwest wholesale in the and in, in the right. in, in Texas, and it used to be, you know, there would be 20 new rap albums coming out every month. Now there's so many songs being released on SoundCloud, um, but not, you know, full projects in the way that they used to be. Right. Um, but I think I think now people are releasing a lot more music, and they're releasing it. Um, they're releasing it with less strategy, and um, and they're releasing a lot of stuff before they've really um, finished it. So people will sometimes release a song multiple times. They'll release one version, and then it, then they'll fix problems and then release a second version, and um, and sometimes even you know confuse people. Well, how important is that you brought up an interesting word, which no one has in any of our interviews yet. How or a concept? How important is having a strategy to um, releasing your music, releasing your single, releasing your mixtape, releasing your album, how important is planning that strategy out versus kind of just letting it, you know, letting the people take it and, and letting it unfold on its own? I think it's essential. And, you know, within, when I say strategy, I also, you know, reference vision. Um, you know, it's having an identity, thinking of project titles of weaving projects, um, not just a collection of songs, but a message being consistent, um, having a, you know, multi-album or multi-project plan and a vision of, you know, of, of how you're creating an identity is essential. I mean, I, sure. I remember, you know, meeting with Kanye early on and he knew his first four album titles. Um, I remember meeting with Pharrell early on, and he had his 20. He had 20 features in his mind with artists he had never met that he had planned out that he was going to do. And he had, you know, I thought it was it was crazy at the time. And yeah, I know. So I thought Kanye was pretty nuts to him too, but but he he pulled it all up, right? 
He pulled it off. I mean, he had a, in his head he had pictures of him performing with certain yeah. perform in certain areas of videos, of, and I saw so much of it happen. But you can't make things happen if you don't have even an idea of what you want. Right, right. So planning is a huge part of it. But if you're a new artist and you don't really know how to even plan in this industry, how do you go about even learning what's a realistic plan? I mean, I, somehow the brilliant artists figure it out. They study the game. They read. They want to know everything. They, you know, watch old videos. Now, really, now there's no excuse because you can go on YouTube and you can fi- figure out how to do anything. You want to figure out how to shoot something in slow motion with certain lighting techniques. You can, you can, you can search on YouTube. You can find a video demonstration. You can watch interviews with artists, with managers, with video directors. You can listen to podcasts like this. If you really want to know the information, it is all out there. And there's no reason why anyone should be should should be able to say that they didn't know or they couldn't figure it out, uh, unless they can't figure out how to use a computer or they don't take the time to to, to do it. So right. I always, you know, I meet artists and they come in and they're meeting with Atlantic and or meet with me for Warner and sometimes they don't even know who signed here. And I said, you you come in to meet with someone and you haven't spent five minutes. You can you know search search me on on Wikipedia in 30 seconds. You know everything you need to know. Essentially, right. Uh, right. people don't make the effort. Right. All right. So you're a new artist, and I don't mean new artist like you're coming up under, you know, uh, MMG or something. I mean like you're your next door neighbor type of artist, very new, and you mm-hmm. want to start making a name for yourself. You know, part of it is carving out the, a bit of the identity of who you are already. How much? How important do you think that needs to be? That you've got kind of a pat. You're already a packaged person, already sellable versus somebody who's kind of coming in and learning uh, along the way, how conscious should you be in your package? I mean, I think you have to know who you are and what you represent and how you're different from others, you know. It's when when all I can get from someone is that they're talking about the struggle and um, they don't have any more perspective than that on it. I think it's, you know, it's uh, they have little chance. Or when they tell me, well, I have a couple songs for the girls, I have a couple songs for the thugs, I have a couple songs for the radio. I think, well, you know, if you're telling me you're, only, you're, you're shooting for everybody, you're probably going to get nobody because no one is going to fall in love. You know, the, the great artists I liked, their music was polarizing at first. Some people loved it. Some people hated it or right. didn't get it. And But either way, they, they were passionate about it. And you can't you can't be you know have passion if you're um, if you sort of aim to please everybody if your sort of message is thin or vague you have to take a position and hold it otherwise you're just you know you're sort of um, you you know it's not you're not memorable you're not taking any chances and you're not going to have you know leave much of an impact. What do you think are the things that a new artist could do the most that stands out, and what do you think are the things that they can do that are the most tired? Um, what gets your think, attention yeah. and what do you say, you know, I've seen this a million times, this is the same old shit? Yeah. I mean, I think identity and and, and, um, and vulnerability um, and growth are the most important things. So I, I'd like to see an artist at this point, you know, if you're not busting out on the road, you're just, you know, in your town, like, you know, creating, you should have a, a, a real project out every six months that has a message that has a common theme that has common sounds and uh and, and you know anyone should be able to des- to describe your you know the position or the the, the concept in a sentence um so and you want to grow you want you, know. you should be very clear on the artist that you are doesn't mean you can't grow into other things but you're pretty clear on what you're trying to do from the very beginning. Exactly. I tell artists, you know, you may be able to, you know, scuba dive and 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 skydive and you know and fly an airplane and a submarine, but you can't do it all at the same time because right. then they're not going to know who you are. You know, you got to choose one thing, and then and then as soon as they, you know, the people identify you for one thing, you add a second, you know, a second uh, dimension to it, and then when they know they understand that, you add a third dimension and a fourth dimension. I still right. say, you know, it's like if, if Coca-Cola, like, you know, would just sporadically change the flavor. Every time you open the Coke, sometimes it tastes like grapes, sometimes it tastes like lemonade, sometimes it tastes like beer. You know, they, they wouldn't have established a brand. you got to build your Coke, then build your Diet Coke, then build your Sprite, one step at a time, building on top of it and building, you know, a repertoire. And, yeah. you know, but like there's, there's you know, there's just because you can do everything okay, 
doesn't mean you need to show it all at the same time. And if you're thinking about a 20-year career, if you show everything, if you show your whole hand at the beginning, you've got no cards to play later. You know, so you can refine those things. You can. It's okay not to release everything. I mean, you have to release consistently and show consistent growth. But sometimes you hold back some of those those cards to show later. As soon as people think they know you, you add a different dimension to the table, and you be strategic. It's like you don't have to put everything out there all at the same time because that's right. there's, that that's no strategy. Right. Right. So and now. You have to have, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. So you have to have what? No, I was gonna say, and you have, and you, ha- and you have to experiment to build those dimensions. Like, I think you gotta, you gotta have, you know, um, I think at Google they have a good thing. You have you're supposed to spend ten or twenty percent of your time on like a high risk project. You, you know, you do eighty percent. your So you gotta put out music that's that's you know in your core competency and what you know you're the best at and you know is your message. Spend a certain smaller percentage of your time taking some really risky experimental. You know, shit, some of it's going to sound like crap, some of it's going to be great that you're going to develop, that you're going to work on and not necessarily release it all until it's like, until you're very confident that that you've figured it all the way out and you've perfected that. And then you add that into your other share. That's that's how I, yeah. It makes total sense and it's it's quite smart. My question for you is, so now you're that new artist and you're you're kind of, you know, figuring out your identity and doing that Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Next Level. What do you focus on in this environment? Should you be making mixtapes? Should you be focused on having the Bobby Schmurter left with one song? What do you think, you know, are we making a transition into the songs over albums? Should they be doing an EP? What is a new artist? What could they do? Because the worst thing is, is they're making all this music, throwing it out over and over, tape after tape, and it's not hitting anywhere. So, yeah. I mean, what, it's, you know, it's, before, it's, yeah. what, what, what do you think is, should be their energy should be focused on very early now? If your goal is longevity, then um, you need to be putting out real, real projects um, right. and you know consistent real projects. It's not about a song. What's a um, real you know, project? If you want, uh, well, <laughs> it's funny. It's uh, a real project is to me at least ten songs. Okay. It could be a mixtape. It could be an album. It could be you know something in between. Um, I have a. A uh, strong um, dislike to EPs. I think you know everyone who says they're releasing an EP. I say, so do you buy a lot of EPs? And they say, no. <laughs> I say, so you listen to a lot of EPs. How many EP you listen to? Well, I don't really, not nah, really listen to EPs. So you're basically going to make something that you don't want. Right. And uh, I've been joking around. I call them um, EP is a. Uh, uh, Irrelevant pro- uh, product. <laughs> That's my. Uh, I've been saying that. I'm saying real artists make real projects. You know. We didn't Frank have it Ocean. years. I mean, it has been 15 years with no EP, right? 20 years with no EP. 15 years that we got out of that trap. Yeah, I mean, no one ever really consumed EP. So you yeah. know, the, the difference is, you know, I, 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 I don't see why people always don't do full projects. Um, and inconsistent, you know, consistent full projects that that have a, a a message or a concept or a sound or a sonic or you know, an right. idea behind them. Right. Right. Anything else you want to add, Mike? Because this has been extremely helpful yeah. and and will be a very yeah. solid uh, addition to the podcast. Yeah, I would say I would say overall, you know, there's um, today's a great time for music. There's no rules to music, you know. There's there's incredible amounts of genre crossing of experimenting going on. I, I'm I'm very motivated and inspired by it. Uh, Hip hop is you know is is like we're past the sort of um, EDM house movement and it's coming back right. to hip hop and hip hop's on the radio and hip hop is global and is it has its you know roots in almost every country around the world right now. This is a great time to make music. It's just yeah, and the you know, the the the, the really smart artists, the ones who study the game, who put thought, you know, who who uh take their time and, and set the bar high. I mean there's a reason why you know, um, you know, Dr. Dre is, you know, stands for credibility. He's very careful in what he put into the market, thoughtful and patient. And, you know, um, you have to be patient. You have to work hard and be patient. And uh, and I'm I'm excited for all those hardworking, patient strategists, and, you know, who are creative, um, you know, because we need, we need, you know, big label money um, behind them, and we need to be promoting those that can, you know, that, that can change the game. All right, so I thought that was one of my favorite interviews from this whole thing. With all the different episodes, um, I just really like Mike's interview. I thought like he genuinely cared about the new artists and, and wanted it out there. And some of the most important things, the takeaways I got from that is 
I love his bit about you can scuba dive, you can skydive, you can fly an airplane, you can do all that, but you don't have to do them all at the, the same time. Mm -hmm. That you don't have to be, you know, your idea of a renaissance man. You don't have to be able to do everything. Focus on one thing and get it right. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, do you see? Do you think a lot of rappers make that mistake? Um, I think nowadays um, a lot of rappers will come out and try to mimic, you know, um, another successful star by, you know, taking on their hobbies, taking on their Wearing fashion. their hat. Yeah. Everybody's wearing a Pharrell hat. So mm -hmm. You wear the Pharrell hat or something. Yeah. yeah, and you're just doing too much in the beginning, you know, aside from just being yourself. Like, you know, Mike said, like, you know, you got to just build those layers on down the line. Like, you don't have to just hit them with it all at once. And even, let's say you even we like Kanye, the what Kanye wears, show us that later after you've shown the primary... Which plays into yeah. that Coke analogy where he said, you know, you can be Coke, build your Coke, build your Diet Coke, and build your dimensions, but build them individually and right. then have them go. You don't have to be everything at once. And how could you possibly be everything at once, right? Um, what other thing that stuck out from Mike, which I think was really on key, is he talked about, you know, having experience with Kanye and Pharrell and meeting with both of them early on mm -hmm. and how many dreams they had. I remember, uh, you know, with XXL, we met with Kanye early on when he was just a producer, you know, with Rockefeller back in the day. And he was so, so, so confident of what, what he was going to be one day and what his dreams were and what he was going to collaborate on. Confident to the point where, you know, you either thought the guy was nuts or nuts or whatever, you know. And so... Um, but look where he is. And I think, you know, Mike pointed that out is that here are two people, Kanye and Pharrell, who early on had such confidence. It wasn't over the top where they were making you sick, but were confident in what they were going to be and what they were going to do. And they made those things happen. And there must be in something out there and kind of setting that dream out there and then being able to accomplish it and putting it out there. And I think that's what he was trying to lean everybody into is that, you know, don't just rap. Be aware of what you want to be and what you want to do and have those aspirations early on, you know, because this is your career. I think mm -hmm. that's what we come back to over and over on is realizing this is your career, you know? Mm -hmm. um, did you like that? What, do you, what else do you think that he added? Yeah, I, I really like that because just like, you know, just him speaking on Kanye and Pharrell just having a that plan in the beginning and knowing how they wanted their careers to pan out. That's just so important because a lot of these rappers will just put out a song or just put out a project and they won't have that plan. They just kind of want to make it. But, you know, if you actually have a plan and a blueprint, it's actually, you know, it's, it's more likely to work, you know? And, and, and as Mike said, you know, not to harp back, but since we just listened to that interview, mm -hmm. you know, um, you need to know what you're going to do and how you're going to represent yourself and how you're different from others. Yeah. And I think that's essential for you to, to stand out. Um, identity, vulnerability, and growth are essential, which is another thing he said, which is totally key. You know, it's sure. okay to be green in the beginning. It's okay to not know how to do any things, certain things, but what we want you or what people want you to be do is clear on what it is you're trying to attain. I think that's, you have to have a kind of clear mind state of what are your goals are mm -hmm. and who you are as an artist to try and get there. Easier said than done. And that's probably why we're doing this as the first episode, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but important, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So great interview with those three. Um, I think it's a good kickoff for the rest of the break podcast by XXL right. next week. And, and I think that might kind of let us into it, but next week, the topic is what to focus on or the next episode is going to be what to focus on. And this means, Hey, should you be focusing on your live show? Should you be focusing on recording? Should you be focused on getting to know the DJs in your hometown? Should you be focusing on getting a manager? What should you be doing at a, at, for these new artists? What level in their career they're at? What's that next step and, and, and what's interesting there? And we'll keep those guests a secret for now, but definitely knowledgeable people coming to the table for us. Yes. So this is XXL's The Break. We hope you enjoyed um, this and got something from it, learned something from it, because uh, these guests and the guests we have coming up over the next few weeks definitely came from the heart, I think, with this interview and generally wanted to offer this piece of information to the new artists because there's so many out there not just to sign them and have make money off of them but really kind of i think we spoke to a lot of good people who just wanted to offer their expertise so mm -hmm. this is the first episode many more to come and, and we will see you next week yes thank you for for listening this is vanessa satin from double xl and we're just wrapping up the break this is miranda J. thanks again for tuning in